There we go. Awesome. So it is about three minutes after the hour, and so I think it looks like we're live, and so we'll get started. Um, I want to welcome everyone watching or maybe reviewing the video um, to the Barista Guild of America webinar, um, Exploring Your men Member Benefits. Uh, and uh, this is actually the first of hopefully a very long and continuing series that the Barista Guild is aiming to bring to our members. Um, we're, we're hoping just to have a monthly uh, webinars that cover a variety of topics. And so member benefits is the first topic we are, we're kicking off the series with, but you'll be seeing everything, um, more webinars coming forth in the future. Uh, and we just kind of thought that membership was a really great place to start because uh, I think a lot of people don't aren't taking advantage of the full extent of their PGA membership. Um, so along the way um, today, if you are following along live, feel free to ask questions um, using the hashtag BGA Voice via Twitter. You can either at Barista Guild, but definitely make sure you enter the hashtag BGA Voice, and we'll endeavor to answer your questions about everything BGA membership under the sun. Um, and to help me with BGA membership, I, uh, we have the lovely Ann Nylander joining us today. And what's your official Hi. title? Hi. Thanks, Julie. I am the SCAA membership coordinator here at it. Awesome. And oh, I didn't introduce myself, but my name is Julie Hausch, and I am the chair of the Barista Guild of America Executive Council this year. And so Anne and I will be both kind of co emceeing and kind of walking through exploring your member benefits. So um, thanks for joining us, Anne. And I think as we kind of dive into the BGA member benefits, the, the number one resource that I think is that people don't really utilize very much is the SCAA website. And so I think that's a really great place to start okay, navigating there on our screen. Yeah, so we're going to kind of walk through this together with everybody. Um, and please, as Julie mentioned, ask questions as we go through this. We're going to kind of navigate live through Julie's account. So she's going to ask me some questions about her account, and we'll go through them. But if you have questions as well, um, go ahead and enter them, and we'll we'll try our best to get to them. Sweet. So, Julie, yep. what's your first question? Yeah. So right now on our screen, we're looking at the SCAA.org um, website, which is actually the main portal. So how do I access my membership profile, Anne? The first thing you'll want to do when you come to our website, we don't have a button that says My Profile. We have the Login button is where you're going to go. So it's on the far right-hand side of the screen when you look at the screen. And when you get to the login page, you'll actually, if you already are a member, you should be able to log in using your primary email address as your username. So we're using Julie's email address here and the password that you either already saved. And if you don't remember, you can hit the forgot your password button or you can um, give us a call or send us an email in the membership department. We'll help you with that. So when you first log in, the way you can tell that you're a member and your membership is active is actually right on this home screen. If it has a lot of links here and everything is showing, then that means that you are a member. If it's just a paragraph on the welcome page and you only have three or four links on the left-hand side, you're not a member. So to look at your record, we'll click on My Information. Cool. Yay, it looks like at least my BGA membership's up to date. I'm always a little nervous that I forgot to renew. Yeah, um, and if you do ever forget, it's always super easy. We're always happy to have people back. Um, so just let us know, and we can help you with that. So here we are in your profile. That's Yay. a great picture, Julie. Very Take nice. It <laughs> it's, it's a selfie. So is everything on your record here up to date? Um, actually, I just moved, so I probably should change my address. Um, OK. And is that that's actually probably why I haven't received my membership card yet, right? <laughs> yep, so this is the address. The one that's next to your picture is the one that we will send you um, your mail. So if you um, have not received a membership packet um, and it's been over 10 weeks since you joined the SCA or renewed your membership, make sure your profile address is correct and then we, you can always contact us and we can resend you a card if you need it. Sweet. I think that's one of, one of the questions I get the most is like, why didn't I have my membership card? And so I think mm -hmm. the address is the key right there. Yeah, and I know that a lot of people move, a lot of braces move very often, and it's probably not the first thing you think of when you're moving. But if you can get to it so we can get that address updated, it really helps us a lot with um, sending you that information along with other mail that we try to send our members. Cool. 
And what happens if I actually switch jobs? Like if I were to be working for a different company or I need to change my email address? That's a really good question. So if those things do get changed in your system, we actually need to verify it on our end. What we need to do is contact your new company and make sure that you really are authorized. Um, so one way you can do that is email us from your new company's email account. Um, that way we know they usually don't hand those out on the street. So um, that's one way we verify your employment. And another way is we just confirm with your manager um, but you do have to send us an email to either change your company information or change your email address that you use as your username on our website. Cool. That's easy enough, but I'm sticking with my job for now, so we don't need to change that. Um, <laughs> one of the other things I think that um, I'm always curious about, and I always forget where to find it, is um, the membership benefit packet. I know we have different things that change from time to time, and there are some links to some really cool benefits, so where do I find that? Yeah, so it's a little bit tricky to navigate to, so it's a good question. Um, and it's actually available through our online store. So if you actually go up to the store tab, um, and our store is a great resource that you can use um, for a lot of things, but there's also a lot of free stuff that's actually available in our store. So I encourage you to kind of browse around and take a look at it. Um, but I like free stuff. I know, right? Um, so the way to find um, the member benefits packet is that you actually um, shop for some categories. You shop for merchandise, and then the category is member resources. And when you hit go here, it'll actually bring up every resource that you have as a member. So for some of you, it may be different. If you have multiple memberships, you might get multiple amounts of stuff. For Julie, I believe it's just the BGA stuff. Let's see. So it's a very exciting little packet. So you can see there's all these different options. And the benefits packet is what we're looking for. So we would just click on that and then purchase it like it's a regular item that you purchase through the store, but you don't have to enter any credit card or payment information. Sweet. It's pretty straightforward. And this process of purchasing items is also essentially the same process for purchasing anything at SCAA except for um, registering for our annual event. So once you've done this benefits packet, it'll help you if you ever want to register for camp, if you ever want to compete or take a webinar or do anything else um, through our system. This is the exact same process. So it's good to practice even. Cool. Seems easy enough. Mm-hmm. I'll pretend to navigate. <laughs> Yeah, I need to give a shout out to my colleague Lily Kubota here because she is our official navigator for the um, presentation today. It's useful. I'm not very good at multitasking, but I can pretend to type like I'm I know. actually the one controlling the screen. You're doing an awesome job. Yeah, if anyone has seen an awesome SCAA presentation, usually Lily Kubota is somewhere behind the scenes making it happen. Yeah. So we're All right. So we're purchasing, and now that it's on the confirmation screen, that means that it's instantly available to you. And all you need to do is go to the My okay. Downloads link. And then it'll be available. Maybe I got a little overzealous, and I've maybe downloaded it before, but... Well, it's actually a good idea to download it at least once a quarter because it does get updated very regularly and there's new stuff. So I can tell everyone on the chat there will be new exciting benefits coming in October. So definitely log in and download them um, starting on October 1st. Yeah. Well, let's scroll down now because I think one of my favorite uh, benefits is the discounts that we get at some of our uh, member, I guess, businesses. And the one that you really okay. can't beat is the espresso uh, parts discount all the way at the bottom. So everyone should download that and take a look so they can get the code. So if you're ever buying, even if it's just like a new tamping mat or something, um, that's kind of my favorite discount right now. It's a good one. Sweet. Um, thanks, Anne. Well, the other question I had too was, uh, I, I know I have my level one um, barista cert certificate, but I definitely work on my level two, and I just need to know what my progress is. Do I have to email someone, or can I access that through the SCAA website as well? Um, well, you can definitely access your education credits, and so we can take a look at that. Um, it's under this fabulously titled link called My Pro Dev slash Vol Credits, which I know has a real ring to it. Um, 
but it's a uh, it's really has all of your history. I guess that so, makes sense. So, yeah, so you can look through it and see what the classes are. I recommend um, if you can reference the certificate handbook that's available on the BGA website as well, just to double check what classes you need for level two. Um, I personally don't have them memorized, but you can take a look and see what your status is um, right through here by referencing the certificate handbook and your credits. And if you do have any questions or you're not sure, um, that's totally okay too. The best thing to do is to email um, barista at scaa.org, which is actually staffed by Alex Littlejohn from the BGA's membership committee. And she, uh, once a week, reaches out to anybody who has any particular questions that they need regarding guidance on barista education in particular. So she's kind of an expert in helping people with that information. So it's a really cool resource. I might have to give her a little email so she can help mm -hmm. me along my path towards a level two certif certification. Mm -hmm. I'm level one certified though, so I think that counts for something. <laughs> yeah, me too. You and me both. Yeah. Well, so it looks like I need a few more classes. Um, how do I find out when the next, you know, um, set of classes that I can take? Where are they located? When do they happen? I think I can do that on the SAA website too, right? Yeah, you absolutely can. And this is a little bit tricky too, but this is also my favorite tab on our whole website. So it's actually the events tab. Um, it has a list of every single thing that the SCAA is up to as far as we know it in advance. So as soon as we have that information and can publish it, it goes on this page. So I recommend that people check this page, especially if you're looking to get certified, very regularly, like maybe once every week or once every two weeks, because events come up, and if you can grab the opportunity, you totally should. So if you just scroll down on this events tab and take a look, yeah. it's a full listing, and there are classes that are specified, like e-learning, which are online classes that you can take from the comfort of your own home, which are really good. Um, and then another thing that's good to notice is that some of our events, like for example, we now have regional training centers that offer classes, and um, I know that there's an event coming up in Seattle. Education so we're just, kind of mm -hmm. we're just kind of filtering through this a little bit, and we're just going to take a look at the Seattle event. And it's just good to know that when you look inside an event record, it'll actually have a list of every class that's being offered. So it's good to actually review the event and take a look at what the programming is so that you can make sure that you are signed up for classes that you want. So you might miss an opportunity, for example, to take Introduction to Cupping, which is a very popular class that we actually offer really frequently, but it's not necessarily listed in the title if you do a search for that term. So definitely take a look at the class. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm playing along a little bit here, but I'm definitely aware of the events tab, and it's, it's, def, it's one of my favorites as well, too, and I tell people to check it all the time. So that's usually one of the questions yeah. we always get is like, oh, when can I take the instructor development program class, the train the trainer course, or how can I work on my BGA certification? And that link is kind of invaluable. Um, and it's also yeah. kind of neat, too, that even though we can, we can sort it by region, it's kind of neat to see that. The, all the yeah, classes are being taught across the world. China. There's so much New going Zealand. on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so while we're having this presentation, uh, later on tonight there will be classes taught in Sydney, Australia by SCAA. So that's, that's pretty cool that. to think about. Yeah. Well, next time I go to Australia, I'll have to see if I can take a class when I'm down there. Yeah, you should. Or I can just stick to my backyard, go to Barista Camp. Um, sweet. So that's pretty cool. I like the events tab. Um, before we navigate away from the SCA website, the other favorite area that I have that I think we should take a look at is the resources tab up at the top of the page. Yeah, that's a really cool page as well. And um, there's a lot of stuff here that's really invaluable. You know, I think that just this resources tab is worth the price of admission for uh, anyone interested in getting involved in coffee because there's just tons of stuff available for download, for review, for reading, at your leisure. A lot of the stuff is free, um, and some of the things it will prompt you to go into our online store and purchase, but you all receive a discount through your BGA membership. 
Definitely. And I mean, we were talking about the levels, the certifications and stuff, the Barista Guild certifications that I think most people are interested in. And I think the SEA Online Libraries may be one of the coolest uh, resources for that. So I've taken yeah. a lot of my level two classes, and uh, I know that I use the library when um, I need to review things. Uh, yeah, and this is actually a really common question we get too, is how to access the library or how to find a class. Um, and this this resource, I think, is kind of like an unsung hero of um, SCAA, because as a BGA or SCAA member, you get access to the materials that we present in every single class that we offer, as long as it's not kind of under review or under development. But it's a huge library of resources. So, like, for example, if you wanted to review the um, presentation from the customer service uh, e-learning course, because you're about to take your level one written exam, you can actually just come in here and search for, I like to search by course code, because it's, the, I think, the easiest way to bring up a class. So that class is CP103, and hit go. Oh, we're searching for intro to brew. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got a little excited. It works with all the class codes, so we practiced with a few yesterday. So my favorite is 103, just because I'm biased towards it. It's my and favorite class. That's to 151. <laughs> intro to brew. Uh, so. so there you go. So you can just see it, and then if you click on the um, bottom link here, that SCAA no collection available line, that's where you go to actually download it, and then it'll bring you to a screen where you either open and then you can save it. It'll it'll download the full PowerPoint presentation or any handouts, if there are any, um, to your computer. Cool. And I, I find it super useful to, re to refer, even if I'm not studying actually for the level one or level two tests, but every once in a while it's nice to go back to like customer service and kind of remind myself, okay, what do we learn in those classes? or even like CP 101 or 102, the introduction to espresso, even though it's like I kind of work with coffee every day, it's nice to make sure that, okay, I'm going to check back in with the SEA standards and stuff that we've learned and make sure that we're on the same page. So. Yeah, and I've also heard that a lot of folks who work um, either as managers or trainers in their cafes, they actually use these materials as references for when they create their own training programs or they just, you know, they need to do a presentation and they just use the materials that we have available to them. So that's an awesome resource for your trainer. Yeah. And up on the page now, I mean, the library itself is kind of like a labyrinth in a lot of ways, or it's very easy to fall down the rabbit hole to be like, I'm going to search for coffee. And there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different results. And um, it's kind of neat to see the resources available. Some of them you have to purchase, so they'll refer you to other books and stuff. You can see the one right now is, refers you to Amazon. Um, but there's also some really neat little uh, publications the SCA has put out as well, in addition to all those, those class resources. Yeah, so one, one party tip that's good to know is that SCA does not actually have a physical library. So if you do see a book here, it doesn't actually exist, we don't have it at the office, so you would have to either purchase it or access it through a colleague or a friend. But this at least is a list of resources that you can find and search for for specific topics or like rare or unusual um, information about coffee. It's pretty cool. It's a good resource. I definitely kind of get lost in the library time to time just when, the, when I want to read up on a few things. Um, so that's the library, but another one of my other favorite things under the resources tab uh, is the coffee taster's flavor wheel. And I think people talk about a lot and we like to refer to, but it's actually available. We can view it online. Um, you can even purchase it for a quick download. And so that's under the resources tab as well. Okay. Relevant to our everyday lives, I think we're always tasting coffee mm -hmm. in the barista profession. And you can purchase it, or usually I just kind of glance at it on the page unless every once in a while I'll purchase it as well too. But in addition to the flavor wheel, you can also see on the screen um, the cupping standards are there, which is also an awesome reference when you're trying to set up a cupping and it's totally forgotten the ratio and recipe. Um, so you're not taking a stab in the dark, but it'll tell you exactly um, how much coffee you need to use um, and how much water corresponds so that you're cupping correctly. 8.25 uh, to 150. Yay. I know. I should probably have that memorized by now, though. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, it was not a test, Julie. I know. The last thing under the SCA website that is kind of also one of my favorite things 
pretty much everything's my favorite. Um, but the SCAA Chronicle you can access via the SCAA website. And because you're, we're all BGA members, we actually can log in and read the full articles. Lately, there have been a lot of tweets about really interesting articles that come across my feed. And uh, the Chronicle, you know, I always click on them and I go, oh, I have to log in. And they're really fun reading. So if you have a couple hours in the afternoon or even a quick minute. Yeah, so this article actually that we pulled up by Joe Morocco is one of my favorites from the last issue. So um, we've logged in now. Um, there is a login screen that you would need to get prompted to uh, just uh, sign in. Um, I think we're going to log out and then log back in just to show you guys. So it wouldn't show the full article, but all you have to do is put in your username and password. And another thing that's good to know for BGA members is that um, you actually get a discount on the Chronicle print subscription as well if you want to um, make that purchase. It's uh, $20 instead of 40 a year, so that's a really cool deal. Cool. It's that's great cool. to get in the mail because it's kind of nice to have just floating around for, for reading when I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got a couple minutes to read about stuff. And There's a lot of good resources online. Like we have Sprudge and all those things like that, but the um, Specialty Coffee Chronicle um, has some different articles as well, too, that I think is also relevant for a lot of baristas to reference. Yeah. And another thing that's really awesome about the Chronicle website is that it's mobile friendly. So you can actually read it on a phone, on a tablet. It's our most user friendly website. So if you're out and about and just want to do some reading, like one thing I do often is if I'm out um, somewhere, I'll read the Chronicle on my iPad, which um, it reads really smoothly and nicely. So it's a lot of fun. And we also should plug the upcoming issue, Julie. Oh, I'm just watching the navigation, seeing how the... Actually, I do read the Chronicle on my phone. Um, but yes, the upcoming issue is um, focused on baristas. The barista issue, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Cafe issue. Yep, barista. Yeah, we've been going through the entire supply chain this year on the Chronicle. Um, so this most recent issue is the roaster issue, which was fascinating to me. And then the next issue, I actually got to read a sneak preview last night. It'll be hitting your guys' mailboxes and um, internets very soon. And it's awesome. It's a really good read. So stay tuned for that. I believe you have an article in it in the next issue. And I believe you do too. Yay! And other EC members, like Colin Whitcomb wrote something, and one of our BGA committee members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really fun read. I'm excited. Julie's article is really good, guys, just so you know. It's a fun resource that I think not everyone knows about, that you can easily log in. Um, but moving along, so SCA website has the bulk of the information, but uh, like we keep saying our favorites, but my favorite website might be the Barista Guild of America website, which is separate from the SCA website. Uh, but we're looking at it right now. Because um, there's even more member benefits on this website, um, even more resources and stuff too. So uh, the main thing, I think the, the thing that gets updated the most on this web page is our blog. And so you, if you scroll down on the main page, the baristaguildsofamerica.net website, um, you'll see the top four most recent articles. But you can also navigate under the Explore tab straight to the blog, and you can see everything better at a glance. So let's do that right now. Sorry, we're skipping around for Lily. She's just trying to keep up with us. <laughs> oh, go on, go on. So you can see at the top here the BGA webinar that we're actually holding right now. We posted about that on the blog. Uh, but the BGA membership committee is actually being super active and creating super awesome content for this blog. So, and you said you liked that St. Louis uh, Signature Beverage Challenge article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's my favorite recently. Um, it was really helpful, I think. It's beautiful. The photographs are great. Um, and it was a really good resource in terms of if you are thinking about hosting a member-driven event or want to learn more about kind of how that process works, it was a really good kind of rundown of, of that process. Very well written. And we're always looking for content from BGA members. So if any of you guys have an idea of a blog post you'd like to share, uh, I highly recommend you guys go ahead and reach out to us at membership at sca.org and, and we'll get you connected with the BGA membership committee to get um, your content up here. We'd love that. Totally, and it's always an open call to uh, submit a blog post. We'd love to hear about anything, even if it's about a local event or if it's about you know your thoughts on cold brew or anything like that. But And you mentioned something when you were talking about this blog post that I think we should talk about. It's the member-driven events. 
Sounds good. Uh, so what are they? So member-driven events are a um, really cool uh, program that we established um, as the Barista Guild. I say we from way back when I was on the Barista Guild Executive Council. Um, so what we notice as a community is that baristas love to get together and, and have events and they wanted a way to kind of find out information about it and also maybe get a little bit support of support in terms of um, uh, some swag or goodies to have at the event and also in terms of the promotion and having a calendar that you could access that gave you that information. So Julie, do you want to kind of share about um, your experience doing MDEs? Yeah, I mean it's definitely it's an awesome MDEs as we call them for short um, are awesome an awesome resource. The fact that I can fill out a form, tell someone about my local event. Um, I I help run the Los Angeles Thursday night throwdowns, the last La Terra competitions, and we always fill out this form every month. And it's kind of great because the Barista Guild then tweets about it and posts on Facebook about our upcoming event. And uh, how many how many people do we have on Facebook that follow Barista Guild and Twitter? We actually have 30,000 followers on Facebook and 20,000 on Twitter. So it's kind of neat because even though you know not all 20 to 30,000 individuals who follow Twitter or Facebook um, are necessarily in the Los Angeles area, it's kind of neat to know that that's getting out there. We'll definitely pick up some LA area baristas who maybe not might not otherwise hear about the event. Or you know, um, I really love the calendar because there's actually a ca calendar where it aggregates all that information on everyone's events around the country. And so it's nice to know that hey, if I were to like kind of go to Chicago next month, or if I were in St. Louis, uh, I would be able to say, hey, is there an event going on, um, and can I drop in on it? And usually, that's actually how I connect with a lot of people when I travel. Yeah, the community calendar I think is a really cool resource. Um, it's one of my favorite things to look at like as a staff person and um, see the list of all the upcoming events that people are putting on like on their own as volunteers um, just to get engaged with their community. Um, and the artwork and the posters that people make are awesome. Um, so it's just a really fun thing to, to take a look at. Um, you know like the film about coffee has been on tour so it's been going around and then we also put our own barista focused events on here um, from the SEA so camp, the competitions, the World Barista Championship, etc. with links to those resources so that's another good way to find the kind of barista focused events that are going on that you can go hang out at. Awesome, yeah. Barista camp, I hope everyone's gonna come and then Big Western's actually happening roughly at the same time too so mm -hmm. pretty good barista events happening coming up and it's we're, we're kind of sparse usually there's a few more local events so actually we're having an LA event next week that I probably should get up and submit an MDE form for mm -hmm. uh, so in addition to those events I think we kind of I've mentioned it right now with the big western but one of the other uh, things that the barista, baristas I think are mostly involved in is um, our coffee competitions. The barista competition, Brewers Cup, uh, Latte Art now we're doing, and also Cup Tasters. And so we're navigating to one of my other, the third favorite website, the SEA.org, baristaguildofamerica.net, and uscoffeechampionships.org. Uh, this is one of my favorite portals, and we won't go in too much into this because we could probably spend an entire hour talking about competition. Uh, but this website has all the information about the upcoming regionals. Um, and also about the national competition that's taking place this year in Long Beach in February. So, Anne, are you going to judge? I know you're a, a world certified judge. Yeah, I, didn't, I usually don't uh, judge at events in the United States. I judge outside the U.S. just because I, it's a schedule conflict, sadly. But I'll probably be at the competitions, hanging out and uh, rocking a membership booth this year. So, cool. um, definitely look for me at at competitions. I will be there. So then it sounds like we're going to need more judges if we won't be there. So the yes. USCoffeeChampionships.org website is a great way to sign up to also judge. Yeah, and oh, judging well, is such a fun way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I definitely, that's actually how I got into this whole mess. I first started um, as a volunteer at a regional event in Pennsylvania, and that, you know, led me down the rabbit hole to get me where I am today. So if you guys haven't volunteered before or thinking about it, I highly, highly recommend it. Totally. We're always looking for volunteers. Judging is actually a volunteering role in a lot of ways because you don't get paid and you do it because you love coffee and baristas and stuff too. And That's also how I got started. 
Um, I volunteered at the SCA Expo a few years ago. Uh, so I think we've talked a lot about all our member benefits that hopefully people know about now or maybe knew a little bit about before, but we hopefully dove into it in a little more depth so uh, you kind of feel better about your BJA membership and know how to take advantage of um, that membership as well. But if you do have any questions in the future, uh, there's multiple different ways to reach out and get your, get your questions answered. Um, yeah, to even just chat with other Barista Guild members. So first and foremost, the Executive Council. You can always reach out to any of us. I'm happy to, um, to receive emails. I'd love if you're in the LA area to hang out or go on a coffee crawl. And any of our other um, EC members also love to hear from folks as well. So if you ever have questions, hit us up first, or there's a few other ways to get in touch and get your questions answered too. We have a couple great, we have great committees. The membership committee in particular, like I said earlier, um, does a lot of blog content and they work pretty pretty closely with Ann too to make those members room and events happen. Get the blog posts up. Good little crew. Yeah. The events committee, and the events committee mostly looks after uh, things at camp. Also BGA presence, the BGA cafe, they oversee that. And the certificate committee which is probably the, one of the bigger areas of you know, education, getting BGA level one and level two certified, becoming an instructor, an examiner. Um, and so you can always reach out individually to those committee members and to the EC members. But the other way you can get in touch through, and I'll let you talk through these actually. You have a better, sure. more official grasp of them than I do. Yeah, so there are now um, kind of three official emails that you can send to. Um, but let me just start by the caveat is that if you ever have a question and don't know who to ask, you can always email membership at scaa.org. We have, um, there's two of us actually that check this email inbox every day, so usually you're responded to within one business day, and we will redirect you. So if you ask us a question that's really technical and specific, we might refer you to the EC, we might refer you to um, a manager on our staff. Um, but if you have specific questions regarding your education, I mentioned this already once before, um, but you can email barista at scaa.org, and that is um, a specific, um, uh, it's checked specifically with uh, your training needs in mind. And then the other one that's a really good contact to know about is that if you have any questions regarding competitions, is to email competitions at sca.org. And if it's anything even remotely related to competitions, I recommend just using that competitions email address right away, just so we can help you as fast as possible. So that one's also checked every day. Cool. Uh, so I think it sounds like there's more than a dozen ways to get in touch with people to answer any questions you guys might have about Barista Guild um, that maybe we didn't answer today or sp are specific to your um, situation, whether or not you're trying to get your certification sorted out or whether or not you're trying to compete or judge or get involved with competitions or if you just kind of want to chit chat with uh, Anne at membership. So. Mm -hmm. awesome. I love chit chatting. So I didn't see any sort of questions come through on Twitter today, but in the future, you know, we are on Twitter at Barista Guild. Uh, the hashtag BJ Voice is pretty much always active. If you send us a question that way too, look, I've added another mode of communication um, <laughs> right now. We're happy to answer them. So uh, I think probably most people will be viewing this after the fact. Uh, and so if something comes up, feel free to even still continue to tweet at us to send us emails, and we are happy to answer your questions and help you make the most of your Barista Guild membership. So. Anything else to add, Anne? No, I think that covers it. I think cool. we did good. Yay. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us and watching um, today, and hopefully this helped. And we'll see you guys again soon.